welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over mass spectrometry, AKA the death star of organic chemistry. Now in America, at least, for some reason in organic chemistry, you start out with chapter one, and then you just skip to chapter 14 of the organic chemistry textbook. I don't know why. And then you go back to chapter two and continue off. That's the American education system for you. So that's why we're doing mass spec right now. So mass spec, is a tool that is used to tell the molecular weight and formula of a given compound. What it is, is a mass spec vaporizes the compound of interest into ions, which can be isolated and identified. So it's kind of like the Death Star of Star Wars, right? It fires a gigantic big ass laser beam at a planet and instantly vaporizes it. When it gets vaporized, it, the planet I'm talking about, it isolates into different fragments. And what you could actually do is take those fragments of that planet or a compound and kind of piece them to together to find out what that original compound was. So just in case a Death Star, they just decide to blow up a random planet, what you can do is gather all the fragments and bits of it and kind of repair it and find out what the molecular weight of that planet was or the compound and formula. So let's go over some terms to know. The plot that you'll be given on exams and tests is called a mass spectrum. This is a mass spectrum. MZ stands for mass charge ratio. This is located on the X axis on the bottom. You will notice that most atoms on the periodic table have a charge of plus one. So therefore, it's kind of just mass over one or just the mass of the atom, okay? The tallest peak is called the base peak. You will notice on this diagram here, I drew the largest peak and noted it as the base peak. This is important because this tells you at what stage of the fragmentation is the compound most stable. Now, let me break it down to you in a different way. Say you have a, say you have a window, okay? You have a big ass window here. In the window, you have some, uh, let's say, metal pieces, like titanium, like cross bridging here for stabilization, okay? Then you take your laser beam, your Death Star, and basically fire it at this window piece. What's gonna happen is all the glass is gonna shatter, okay, into millions of pieces, but the titanium frame, the cross bridge here, will stay intact because it's very stable, okay? That piece, because it's being really stable, is the base peak. So it's basically telling you at what part, when you fire this laser beam at the compound, is the basically the most stable. Where, where is it the most pieces are attached? So that, so if you were to look at this diagram, we have 40, we have 41, we have 42. Okay, so at the molecular weight, not atomic weight, but at the molecular weight or mass at 42 is where we're going to find the most fragments. So uh, how else should I put it? Uh, hopefully that makes kind of more sense, right? So you start out with the big atom, you shoot a laser through it, and you'll see that most of the fragments that are left over are the size of 42 in molecular weight. Okay, and everything else just shatters. That's kind of how, uh, that's how the best way to describe it. Now the molecular ion, or M plus, or parent ion, is usually one of the last peaks, okay? This is in indicating the entire compound is intact. This right here is the key to figuring out your molecular mass of your compound, okay? So you'll notice at the very end bit here, we see a few bars. One of them is the molecular ion, okay? It's this one. How do I know which one, which one it is? Because you see that you have many bars here, right? Here's the trick, because a lot of people struggle with it, because a lot of people will think that this is the, the molecular ion and not this. The trick is you look at the last grouping. Whenever you see a mass spec graph, you will always notice that there are groupings of bars, right? Groupings of bars. So what you're gonna look at is the last group of bars that you see on the graph. The largest of that group is the molecular ion, okay? So the largest, tallest bar of the last group 
is the molecular ion. It is not necessarily always going to be the base peak. Sometimes the molecular ion can be the base peak. So if that is the case, that means when you shoot a laser at the compound, it's really resistant into breaking up into pieces. That means it kind of likes to stay fully intact. Okay, and that can happen. Now the M plus one and M plus two peaks are exactly one space or two spaces over to the right of the molecular ion. This is indicating isotopes, including chlorine and bromine. So that's gonna be the next slide. So just really quickly, what that is, is we have the molecular ion right here, okay? The space right next to it is called the M plus one peak. And the space right after it, if there was a bar, there would be M plus two. And these are very helpful to recognizing if there is any chlorine or bromine in your compound of interest, okay? So hopefully this makes sense. So let's do a quick, um, let me quickly explain what's going on here as a whole. Here is our molecule, okay? So we have one carbon atom, two carbon atom, three, four, five carbon atoms, okay? So we have five carbon atoms. It's too thick. Okay, five carbon atoms. How many hydrogens do we have? So we have, Hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here, 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 and here. Okay, so six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve hydrogen atom. Okay. So now, here's the cool thing. All you need to do is look at the periodic table. So I have one over here. So you will notice carbon number has an atomic number, a carbon has an atomic number of six, right? That is not what we look at. This is a very, very, very common misconception on why people have so much, so much difficulty figuring out these problems. What you look at is the molecular weight, not the atomic number. So you'll notice carbon has an atomic weight of 12. 12, okay? And then I told you we have five of them in that molecule. Okay, so we do simple math, and that is 60. And then how many hydrogens do we have? We had, sorry, we had 12 hydrogens, okay? So hydrogen has a molecular weight of one. We just round down because it's very small, okay? So plus 12, that is 72. We go back, and you'll notice that indeed our molecular ion is 72. This is 72 right there, okay? 70, 71, 72, okay? And that's how you kind of figure out these problems. It's kind of very straightforward. The hardest part is just realizing you're not counting the atomic number, you're counting the mass weight, the molecular weight of it. Now let's go over the nitrogen rule. The nitrogen rule states, it's very easy, if your molecular ion, right, so this number right here, if this is an odd number, you almost certainly have a nitrogen. It just works like that, okay? I don't, difficult to explain, but that is just how it is. Now, if you have multiple nitrogens, say for example, you have two nitrogens or four nitrogens, an even number of nitrogens, then it doesn't really work, okay? Then, you, then the molecular weight's gonna be, the molecular ion's gonna be even. But if you have an odd number of nitrogens, you will have an odd molecular ion number. Okay, the M plus one peak is kind of useless to be honest, but if you have a baby peak of like 1% compared to the molecular ion, you have a carbon 13 isotope. Most carbons exist as carbon 12. Some of them can exist as carbon 13. It's kind of useless though, so really don't worry about it. If you ever see a baby peak like this, just like this, and you're asked the question, is there any carbon 13 atoms in your compound? The answer is yes. That's basically it. M plus two is the very important one. If you have a peak that is 33% of the size of the molecular ion, you have a chlorine atom, okay? And this is denoted as 37 chlorine, or chlorine 37. And I'm gonna show you what that means in a second. If you have a peak that is equal in height to the molecular ion, you have a bromine atom. And bromine has an isotope number of 81. 
So let's go back here. Now say if I create a bar that is one about man, let's see, let's see about that size. Okay, it kind of looks thirty three percent decrease, right? Like so this is thirty three percent of this roughly. This would tell me there's a chlorine atom in the molecule of compound of interest. Okay, that's a dead giveaway. Now, if the red bar is equal in height, so the m plus two peak that is right here and the molecular ion are both the same size. That tells us immediately that we have a bromine atom in our compound. It's a dead giveaway. It's a cheat code right there, okay? So let's do some practice problems. And this is super, I'm gonna tell you this very simple, okay? Very, very easy to do. Two of them are really easy. The other two are not that easy. Now, here's what you could do. You can either count the molecular weight of the atoms and get the answer immediately, or you can do the shortcut method, okay? Here's a shortcut method. Oops, sorry. Let me zoom out here. You'll notice that we have a chlorine and we have bromine, NH2 and OH. That's the only differences, right? So let's look at the chlorine one. Which one do you think the chlorine mass spec belongs to? Well, you can immediately tell that we have the molecular ion right here, right? This is the, the, this is the last bit, the last grouping, and this is the tallest one. So that must be the molecular ion. Well, if we count two spaces over, we see that we have this bar, the N plus two peak. And you'll notice it's 33% in size, roughly, to the molecular ion. And by definition, like I said, if you have a 33% peak, it must be chlorine. So chlorine must be in the molecule. So this belongs, so let me drag this over. Let's see if this works here. Yep, like that. And that's, what happened? Oh, it's putting it, arrange it. Yay, okay, there we go. Okay. Let's look at the next easy one, bromine. Okay. What is this? <laughs> Put a mini. Uh, okay. Bromine. Which one do you think it belongs to? We can cheat your way through it. You can look that we have the molecular ion right oops, right here, right? So this this peak right here. Because it's the last of the grouping. And you can kind of tell it's a little, it's pretty, it's the tallest one, right? But barely, okay? You'll notice the M plus two peak is almost the same size, almost. It's close enough, okay? To the same size as the molecular ion. So that indicates bromine exists there. So this compound must have bromine. Bring it forward. Oops, sorry, R. Okay, there you go. Now we're left with these two. What do we do? They look almost identical. They actually, they are really identical. But there's one key difference. It's where the molecular ion is placed. You will notice if you zoom in here, that we have 90, we have a 91, which is nothing, 92, 93, and 94. The molecular ion for this is 94. So let me write that down. For the bottom one, we have 90, 91, 92, 93. Okay, so we're one less, right? You have to be careful, you have to count these perfectly, okay? So now here's what we do. We need to count the molecular weights of all the carbons and all of the hydrogens, the nitrogens and oxygens, whatever we have, okay? So this molecule, the NH2 has, Six, six carbons, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, seven hydrogens, right? So hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. I mean, it's seven. Uh, yeah, seven. Oh, sorry. I'm, I did not mean to draw two hydrogens. That's wrong. It's one hydrogen, right? One, 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 one. Yeah, okay. Then you have one nitrogen. Okay, C6H7N. So 
Let's do some math here. So we have carbons. We have six carbons, so six times 12 plus, we have seven hydrogens, that's plus seven, plus one nitrogen, which is 14. Uh, 67, right? See, hold on, so this is like, hold on. No, no, that's not 67. <laughs> sorry, math, see, not a math major. Um, hold on, mental math, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Seventy nine, and then this would be plus fourteen. So that is ninety three, right? Ninety three. Yeah, that's ninety three. Okay, ninety three. Hey, look at that, ninety three. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> uh, that's the answer. So this is the way to do it, by the way, on exams. Uh, okay. Ah, cut, cut off. Great, is this the one? Yeah. <laughs> Just making sure I dragged it to the right one. Uh, it's a mess, sorry. This video, this video is not going to be the best one, but you know, I'm, yes, I'm tired. So then this, it'd be left with this one. Forward. Can't even see that. Okay, that's the answer. That's how you do it. That's it. Uh, it's pretty simple. And now on exams, it would be very unfair to tell you I'll give you a question. Based on this mass spec, what do you think the, the compound will look like? I mean, you can kind of guess that it ha it's gonna have a bromine or chlorine based on the N plus two peak, but if it doesn't, then, you know, it's kind of difficult. You may be asked to propose a possible compound and all you have to do is just add up some carbons and hydrogens and, you know, kind of bullshit your way through it. Um, but how, how these problems kind of work on exams is you're going to be given something called mass spec and IR spec, HNMR and carbon, um, uh, carbon spectrum to these problems. And so that's what we're going to do next. So if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And until next time, later.